Rosaria is the polearm addition to the Cryocast and offers a ton of utility to your team, such as insane cryo application, DPS, and crit rate. If you rolled her on the most recent banner and you're here, you're definitely looking for some options to build her, so I'm going to show you exactly how. My name is Braxophone, and this is the Ultimate Rosaria Play Guide. Today we'll be talking talents, three ways to build her, her best auto rotation, character synergies, and constellations. Without further ado, let's get right into the talents and build. Rosaria's auto attack is a 5 attack combo with 7 actual swings, but there are 2 hits on the 3rd hit and 5th hit. Rosaria's E skill allows you to teleport behind enemies and deal cryo damage on a short 6 second cooldown. And at talent level 6, the damage scaling is decent at 81 plus 190%. Unfortunately, you can't teleport behind shield meter churls and ruin guards, and it doesn't have iframe so it's not always super useful for dodging, but it can be useful in some situations. Her Q ability drops an Ice Lance on the ground that leaves an AoE that does an initial skill damage when the Ice Lance drops and 4 damage ticks over time of cryo damage. This is the ability that allows her to be an awesome cryo support or DPS because it allows for that flexibility, and her ascension talents just add to that. Her ascension talent 1 makes it so that when she uses her E, she gets a 12% crit rate buff for 5 seconds after using it, as long as she teleports behind an enemy during the cast. This is really good for her, but it's really good for the rest of your team, because ascension 2 gives the party 15% of Rosaria's crit rate when she uses her Q ability. What this means is that you're buffing Rosaria's crit rate by 12%, and then you can give your party 15% of Rosaria's total crit rate, so if you build Rosaria to 88% crit rate, your team will be able to always have 15% crit buff after using her Q ability. So, as stated before, to get the most crit rate out of this, you need to use her E before you use her Q, so that way the crit rate that's calculated gets the bonus 12% and calculates that into what it passes along to the rest of your party. And finally, her non-combat passive makes it so that at night, your party members get a 10% movement speed buff. This is between the hours of 6pm and 6am in-game. Rosaria is super flexible and can can fit a ton of different teams and roles, so I'm going to show you the best builds for main DPS, burst DPS, and cryo application and support. We're going to start with main DPS. If you're running main DPS Rosaria, Blizzard Strayer is amazing. It provides an absurd amount of crit rate if you run a freeze team, and then even if you're not running a freeze team, it's going to give you a 20% crit buff whenever enemies are affected by cryo, so I'd really recommend running double cryo for the cryo resonance and 15% bonus crit rate, because you're always going to have cryo applied anyways. That's going to be your goal with her as a main DPS. And then even better, you could run Jingcho or some kind of Hydro character to make sure you're always getting the 40% crit rate buff from the freeze, as well as the 15% cryo damage bonus, which comes from the two-piece set. Running four-piece Blizzard Strayer in a freeze comp allows you to use a crit damage circlet in almost every single scenario, so it's honestly just a really great set to use with her and not hard to get the four-piece set effect off. However, if you don't have the four-piece Blizzard Strayer set, you have two other options, and here they are. The four-piece retracing bolide set has been very good since release of the game if you're running a shield comp, but not a lot of people talk about or use this all the time because it's kind of a pain in the butt to keep a shield up sometimes, and there's also just a lot of better sets in the game now for specific characters. Four-piece retracing Bolide, though, does give you a 40% damage bonus to your normal and charged attacks, which is really great for her if you're using something like Crescent Pike, and it doesn't necessarily limit you to physical damage or cryo damage because you can always just infuse your weapon, so it is really, really great for getting that maximum damage output as long as you have a really strong shield character. If you're running just physical DPS Rosaria, you also have the option of two-piece Bloodstained and two-piece Gladiator. I would actually make the argument that if you don't have a crit weapon or super great crit substats, you should actually run this set over Blizzard Strayer, specifically because if you don't have good crit stats, then building this set would actually be more consistent for your damage output, and these two two-piece sets have proven time and time again to be pretty reliable for physical damage builds, which is just due to the 25% physical damage bonus that Bloodstain gives, which is a big bonus for a two-piece set, in addition to the 18% attack from Gladiators. The four-piece Gladiator set is also super good and can basically compete with the two-piece Bloodstain two-piece Gladiator set, specifically because of the auto attack rotation stuff we'll talk about later, so stay tuned for that. If we're looking at highest damage per second potential, the best sets in order are 4-piece Blizzard Strayer, 4-piece Gladiator, 4-piece Retracing Bolide, and 2-piece Bloodstain, 2-piece Gladiator. As for stats here, regardless of going Cryo or Physical Main DPS, you do want attack percent on your Sands. If you're Physical Damage, you want to build a Physical Goblet, and if you're Cryo Damage, you want to build a Cryo Goblet. And then for your Circlet, you want to run Crit Rate or Crit Damage, and try to get the 40 Crit Rate to 80 Crit Damage ratio at a bare minimum. If you can't reach that ratio, you want to run attack, but because Rosaria has access to the 4-piece Blizzard Strayer, you shouldn't have any problem reaching that crit rate. 
Moving on to the best main DPS weapons for Rosaria, here is the list provided by Theory Crafters and Rosaria mains. As a surprise to absolutely nobody, Crescent Pike is still the most broken pole armor in the game for physical damage, and if you're running a physical damage build, you should absolutely use Crescent Pike over any other 5 star. It's free to play, easy to refine, and it is broken. Following Crescent Pike for physical damage, you have the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, because it has that crit rate. You have Skyward Spine, which has energy recharge, and then its passive gives crit rate as well. Dragon Spine Spear is actually really good for Rosaria, but the problem is that 5 stars outclass it, and then of course, Crescent Pike, the free-to-play, easy-to-build one, also outclasses those five stars, which means that we probably just won't see a lot of use for Dragon Spine Spear, unfortunately. Following that, we have the Vortex Vanquisher and the Staff of Homa. Ultimately, if you're free-to-play and you're looking to make her a physical damage carry, then Crescent Pike is going to be your best bet. If you use her with Chongyun, you can actually turn her into a full uptime cryo DPS, and that means that Crescent Pike and Dragon Spine Spear will actually fall off quite a bit. While they both still do decent damage, I would actually recommend going with Prototype Star Glitter over either of those weapons because it'll give you energy recharge which gives you more access to your Q ability and since you'll be doing cryo damage you'll want the passive damage buff. Lithic Spear is a little bit weird. If you have three leeway characters in your party outside of Rosaria then Lithic Spear actually ends up being way better than Prototype Star Glitter but again if you're free to play don't worry about that just go with Star Glitter. And if you're using her as a main DPS I would recommend leveling her auto attacks first because that's where a bulk of your damage is going to be coming from. Following that I would level her E because that's where you're going to get a majority of her crit rate bonus or 12% and then after that you can level her Q which is another great source of damage. Moving on now to build number two, we're going to be looking at Burst DPS Rosaria. This one is a little bit more straightforward to build. Ultimately, what you're going to want is two-piece Blizzard Strayer and two-piece Noblesse Oblige, and that's going to be because you get a 20% Q damage increase from Noblesse that's going to apply to every single hit of the damage over time and the initial skill damage. Four-piece Blizzard Strayer is okay too, but you're actually going to end up netting more damage, especially if you're using Elemental Reactions if you go with Noblesse, because the four-piece Blizzard Strayer effect only takes effect if you're hitting someone that already has Cryo applied to them. So if you're going for something like a reverse melt and try to get as much DPS as possible, Noblesse is going to secure you much more consistent damage. The stats that you want on this set are actually kind of dependent on the weapon that you're running with her. Because she's a burst DPS, you do want a little bit of uptime on her Q, but you don't necessarily need it up all the time. So first ask yourself, am I running a secondary cryo character in the team? If you're running a secondary cryo character, they can be a battery for Rosaria, which means you don't need to run energy recharge. Additionally, if you're using prototype Star Glitter or Skyward Spine, those both have passive energy recharge to them, which means you don't need to run energy recharge on on your sands. Realistically, if you're just trying to get the highest numbers possible, then you do want attack percent, or if you're reverse melting, you definitely want to run elemental mastery over attack percent. However, if you don't have a second cryo on your team, you're not running star glitter or skyward spine, you may actually want to consider running energy recharge on her sands. I would say the best way to tell is really just to try it out. I've always felt comfy using two cryo units and not running energy recharge, but if you feel like that's too low for you, go ahead and give it a shot, maybe level up an energy recharge one a little bit, see how much that helps. If you don't like it, put it into your attack sands or whatever you want to do. I found that I'm okay with just running two cryo. As for the best in slot weapons for cryo burst damage, I would actually argue that the Primordial Jade Wing Spear is better than Staff of Homa for her, specifically because she passes on crit rate with her ascension talent, and so having that passive crit rate on Jade Wing Spear is going to be really nice. Also, if you switch her and get a couple hits with Jade Wing Spear and you make its passive go off, it is going to do a ton more damage when you use her Q. However, Staff of Homa, of course, is broken, just like Jade Cutter. Anything that takes from your total health pool and puts it your attack is going to be really strong, as well as Homa's 66% crit damage at max level. It's crazy, honestly, it is nuts. Vortex Vanquisher is also pretty good, but Skyward Spine is a much better choice. It does have energy recharge as its substat, which would allow you to build attack percent on your sands with no problems at all, and it gives a passive crit rate, which is good for her passive as well. Skyward Spine's an amazing choice for her, similarly to what we said in the Cryo DPS section. Lithic Spear is going to be a little bit better than Prototype Star Glitter, but Prototype Star Glitter is the easiest one for you to access as a free to play player. So if you don't have any 5 stars, which I'm assuming most of you don't, just go with Prototype Star Glitter, you won't regret it for Burst DPS. If you're building Rosari as a Burst DPS, you want to make sure to level her Q first, then her E, and then her autos, if you choose to level her autos at all. But if she's just a Burst DPS, then you probably don't even have to waste the resources on her auto attacks, just because you're only going to be using her for Q and E anyways. The final build I'll be showing you guys today is the Cryo Application and Support build, which is my personal favorite build, but of course all the other builds are viable as well. With this build, Rosaria is less focused on damage and more focused on applying Cryo for your melts, and also passing on crit rate. So for this build, you have three options for artifacts, but here are my personal favorite. The four-piece Noblesse set is always good and always will be good because it gives you the 20% attack to all party members after you use her Q, which is just a really great support utility set. However, another thing you can do is actually 
actually run the two-piece noblesse and two-piece berserker set and a ton of people are going to probably comment about this right now without even listening to what i have to say about berserker set being a four star set but hear me out the goal of this build is two things it's to apply cryo and it's to give the most crit you can possibly give to the rest of your team without having to invest too much in a perfect world rosaria is going to have 100 percent crit rate after you activate her e it'll put her from 88 percent up to 100 percent but in a not so perfect world where you can't get the sub stats you need or you don't have a crit rate weapon the berserker set comes in super clutch for this because we don't care too much about damage and we just want to make sure that the crit rate gets applied to the rest of our party we can actually run this on the feather which will lower our damage by a little bit and then we can put it on the flower as well and putting it on the flower is going to make it so that we do get a little bit less hp but we're not taking too much of a hit to our damage and boom just like that we have a 12 percent bonus to our crit rate in addition to the crit rate hat that we should be running alongside our crowd damage goblet and energy recharge sands the reason not to run the four piece blizzard strayer set is because a 20 percent or 40 percent bonus crit rate that you're going to get from it actually activates the second you hit an enemy but it doesn't actually buff your stats what it does is it buffs your crit rate in the instant that you hit the enemy so when the damage is being calculated that gets output above the enemy's head the damage number that shows up whether or not that's a crit it gets factored into that but it doesn't get factored into your actual stats whereas the two-piece berserker set does actually factor the 12 percent crit rate into your stats the same rules apply with cryo resonance you're not actually getting the bonus 15 percent crit rate to rosaria's stats you're getting it to each hit so when you're running this build on rosaria you don't actually need to run double cryo though it never hurts to run double cryo if you do have a character that is a cryo carry but again just to reiterate make sure to use energy recharge on your sands cryo damage on your goblet and crit rate on your circlet up until about 88 percent if you for some ungodly reason can reach 88 percent crit rate without a crit rate hat build crit damage but i don't think it's going to happen in a lot of cases you're going to have to have some cracked out substats as far as weapons go in my personal opinion what i found to be effective is the following i think deathmatch is actually the best weapon for this build specifically because it gives you a 33 percent crit rate at level 90 followed by primordial jade wing spear which has a 22 percent crit rate so deathmatch the four star actually outdoes primordial jade spear by 10 percent crit rate which is very helpful for passing on the 15 percent to the rest of your team but outside of those i think the best support weapon for it would probably be skyward spine just because it gives you the energy recharge and some crit rate so it kind of double dips and it has a really high base attack following that prototype star glitter is going to be your jam and you definitely want to go for that if you're free to play and you don't have access to any of the other weapons i just listed also make sure not to over cap on crit rate again you don't need more than 88 percent because when you teleport behind someone with her e skill you're going to get 12 percent crit rate to her that'll put her at 100 percent and give your team the full 15 percent crit rate her e does specify that it can't go above 15 percent as for talent leveling follow the rules of burst dps for leveling here you want to get her q up first and then her e now that you all know about her best three builds, we can talk about her auto attack rotation and what I did to test it. All attack strings were tested with deathmatch away from all enemies except for the ruined guard, so deathmatch's ability only proc for one enemy. The combos aren't really a damage showcase, but they showcase the best auto attack combination to get the highest damage over time when you're fighting regular enemies. All critical hits were replaced with non-critical hits in damage calculation, and animation cancels were done with a dash to cancel and lag. On screen now, you should see the results of what I tested. Every single combo should be there, including dragon strike tech if you're interested in that high apm stuff the results are as follows charged attacking isn't worth the dps loss in rosaria because one two three four into animation cancel is the best combo for auto output without the dragon strike tech so if you're using dragon strike tech you're going to get the highest dps but you'll run out of stamina after a few uses and it doesn't proc the effect of crescent pike on plunge if you decide to use that weapon with crescent pike the most practical combo is one two three four into animation cancel for auto attacks as well and if you're running as a main dps or a physical dps in specific you will want to use crescent pike so don't do any of the nutty charged attack animation cancel stuff it's not the best something interesting that i noticed is actually that the end lag on rosaria's combo is so short that it's almost even not worth animation canceling after hit number five it's almost not a dps loss at all so if you're not feeling super high apm gamer you don't have to worry about animation canceling you can literally just finish your full combo and you're still going to get pretty decent damage our next topic is character synergies well i'm not going to discuss full teams i will be telling you which characters go really well with Rosaria, and then maybe we'll be releasing a couple of team guides in the future. Rosaria, being a new cryo character with a lot of application and damage to offer, makes her a super flexible unit. Her best cryo pairings for main DPS are Chong Yun for the elemental infusion and Kaya for applying cryo, but all current cryo units in the game as of 1.4 are pretty viable with her. Though this isn't a combat synergy per se, Diona increases movement speed of characters in her icy paw shield, so running Rosaria with Diona at night will make you a speedy waifu. Xingqiu is one of the most amazing supports for her because it allows for permanent 
Karma Freeze teams, including Kaya or Shongyun. And to be completely honest, you should always be considering Jingcho if you're ever trying to create a Perma Freeze comp. Because Rosario applies so much cryo even when she's off the field with her Q, Child, Mona, and Barbara all complement her super well. And if you're using Child, you can run him with Rosaria and Perma Freeze inside of the Ice Lance. That has definitely been one of my favorite interactions so far. My current favorite interaction right now with Rosaria, though, is Sucrose, because enemies will constantly take Animo, Cryo, and Swirl damage when Sucrose's Q pulls them in. Sucrose Q is the perfect tool to pull enemies into the damage over time that Rosaria puts out. So if you apply Pyro to Sucrose Q, or if you just let it be, or if you use Hydro, ultimately you're going to get a ton of reaction damage, a ton of Cryo damage, and a ton of Animo damage. It's just a really sick combo. And then of course Venti fits in this category as well, but I don't use Venti because it feels like cheating. With main DPS Rosaria, Xiangling and Jinyan work super well because they constantly apply Pyro, so that means that you can reverse melt super well. If you use Xiangling's Pyronado before you use Rosaria's Q, you basically get constant reverse melt, which is really, really sick. I've also been enjoying using Amber's Taunt and Rosaria Q to pull enemies' attention in. It's not 100% effective, but since I've been trying to level Amber and get some use out of her, getting that melt is really nice. Both Hu Tao and Diluc work, but they'll easily knock enemies away from Rosaria's AoE, as will other charged attack spammers and Claymore users, so if you're gonna use a character who knocks enemies back a lot, make sure to use an animal character that can group enemies like the Animo MC, Sucrose, or Venti. Beta Q is another fun interaction with Rosaria and Chongyun, because you can superconduct everything, just be aware that you can lose your cryo application, so running 4-piece Blizzard Strayer here is not as strong. Same rule applies to Fischl. And if you have Rosaria at Constellation 6, physical carries like Razor become a lot stronger. Overall, so far, my favorite team to use with her has definitely been Rosaria, Child, Kaya, and a 4-piece Viridescent Gene, but there are plenty of other great teams to play with her since she's such a flexible character. So to be honest, she gets a ton of value with most of the cast, you don't have to be too picky about who you choose to build her with. Moving on now to Rosaria's Constellations, here you should gain a decent knowledge of how these work and whether or not they're worth investing in. Constellation 1 for Rosaria makes it so that when she deals a crit hit, her attack speed increases by 10% and her normal attack damage increases by 10% for 4 seconds. This is another reason not to use charged attacks. If you have Constellation 1, there's no point using it because it will only increase your normal attack damage, not your charged attack damage. This Constellation is super awesome for people building main DPS Rosaria. Constellation 2 for Rosaria is freaking awesome. It allows you to get 2 more ticks of cryo damage by Rites of Termination which is her Q ability. This is done by extending the duration of the ability by 4 seconds. It also allows for more cryo application, which is just great. Constellation 3 levels up her E by 3. Constellation 4 is also really great for main DPS Rosaria. It probably has the least value of all of her constellations outside of 3 and 5, however it does give you extra energy recharge when you're getting crit hits with her E, which is just generally really good for getting her Q up time. Constellation number 5 increases her Q skill by 3 levels. Constellation number 6 makes her physical carry potential much better and allows for other physical physical carries to take the field when she uses her Q. This is done by decreasing physical resistance on enemies by 20% for 10 seconds, which is about the cast of Rites of Termination standard, not accounting for the constellation you'll have for it, of course. 1, 2, and 6 are definitely the best constellations. If you're free to play and you're trying to think if you should invest into more constellations for Rosaria, if you really like playing for her, I say go for constellation 2, or go for constellation 1 and wait for her to come around in the shop in a couple months. Many of you graduated from the school of Hutao, and for those of you who watched this video all the way through, you have graduated from the school of Rosaria, so congratulations. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like Engine Impact content and guides, make sure to follow me on YouTube by pressing the subscribe button down below, and if you want to see live content and account reviews and all sorts of fun challenges, interact with the community, etc., you can join the Discord in the description, and you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Braxophone. I am live about two to three days a week. Outside of that, folks, thanks again so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.